Former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens has lost what's left of his moth-riddled 97-year-old mind. Our nation's highest jurists, active and retired, should have the greatest understanding and respect for the Constitution and its prescience. Instead, Stevens wants to wad it up and discard it like a used tissue. JPS, like so many shaken Americans, was moved by the ongoing protest of young people in the wake of the Parkland, Florida massacre. So what's his solution? Background checks? Limiting ammunition sales? Perhaps mandatory safety training for all gun owners? Nope. Those are far too moderate and pragmatic. Stevens wants to trash and repeal the entire Second Amendment of the United States Constitution because he's been so touched by the kids. It's probably a good idea to torch a sacred document based on adolescent political whims, especially when they are rooted in exploitable tragedy. There are a couple of things happening with his plea. One, he trashes the NRA and demands they be neutered for the sake of safety. So you'd also have to toss the First Amendment. Sorry, press and clergy. Maybe the kids will march in your favor someday. Guns aren't legal because of some outdated document. They protect basic freedoms by allowing people to preserve their own lives. And as I've said many times before, and this is a philosophical point, whoever has the guns has the power. If the people have the guns, they have the power. And that is a true democracy. Now, let's say in the interest of life and safety, we do repeal the Second Amendment so law-abiding liberty lovers can no longer protect themselves and their families. Does that make life safer? No, because there are still bombs, IEDs, cars, knives, pills, human nature, murderous impulses, oh, and 300 million guns still floating around. Repeal and confiscation are two drastically different concepts, but if you try and marry them, you'll experience the great divorce of active revolution. At least Stevens wears his bold authoritarian ideology on his worn-out sleeve, and you know where the left is coming from. Make no mistake about it. They are coming for your guns. Let's get to it. I'm Kennedy. Hi. So former Justice Stevens wants to ditch the Second Amendment, but is this a viable solution to gun violence or a liberal fantasy for doomed failure? Townhall.com editor Katie Pavlich joins me now. She's also a Fox News contributor. I'm also joined by a columnist at Pacific Standard Magazine, David Perry. Welcome to both of you. Hi, Kennedy. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So, Katie, I will start with you. Um, you know, a lot of people on the left say this isn't about taking guns away. It's not mm -hmm. about banning guns. It's not about repealing the Second Amendment. But clearly for some people uh, who no longer have an active political agenda, people like John Paul Stevens, who has been on the wrong side of this issue for a long time, that's what it's really about, isn't it? Well, first, I want to say thank you for having me on your show to exercise my First Amendment rights to defend uh, the Second Amendment rights of millions of Americans all across the country, first of all. Second of all, to your point, yes, for a very long time, we have heard the left argue they just want common sense gun reforms. When you really look at this and you have people like uh, Justice Stevens coming out and saying they want a full repeal of the Second Amendment, which is virtually impossible considering you need 38 states to agree to that. Uh, and they're not going to do that considering Republicans are in charge of most of those states. States. However, that doesn't mean that local jurisdictions of the federal government can't limit the Second Amendment so much that the, the right to bear arms is essentially outlawed. And so you have to keep that in mind. But when you look at the signs that were at the march this weekend, when you look at the rhetoric of a number of people uh, in Rolling Stone, in the New York Times, they lay out the fact that they want to confiscate millions of guns, want to turn gun owners into criminals. We had a sheriff in North Carolina just this week saying he wanted to kill uh, gun owners. People hear that and go, you know what, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to give the government all that power, and I'm certainly not going to give it to uh, law enforcement officers who are openly talking about going after gun owners in a, a, a way that results in their death. And, uh, David, now I understand there are a lot of people on the left who, who are going to say, like, no, this really is about w what Katie said, common sense uh, gun control. Where do you stand on right. this and, and John Paul Stevens' <laughs> exhortation that we repeal the Second Amendment? You know, I think, uh, again, thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm glad to have this conversation. We can't just talk to ourselves in our partisan bubbles. And, uh, you know, I, I think that on, on the right, you need to reckon with the fact that you've lost a Republican like John Paul Stevens. And, and here's why. 
since cer certainly <laughs> Wait, since. Wait, hold on. John no, 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 hang on. Republican. That's fun. Thank he, you, David. He was. Thank you so he much. He was. Yeah. He was. It's worth thinking about why he's not, right? So here's the thing. Not really as a libertarian. It's not about that at all, all right. my friend. Do all a little right. research before you all come right. on the show. This, this is not a show based in some partisan fantasy that uh, you may have painted okay. for yourself. So, so here's the thing. Every time that there's one of these horrific events, the right and the left come together and start talking about reasonable reforms. There, most of us mostly agree on most of the things we want to do. Not all of them, but plenty of things. But it never happens. It never happens. We never get any of these common sense reforms through. What so does that mean? Define what's common next? sense. Oh, I mean, just the kind of things you said, talking about domestic abusers, talking about universal background checks, limiting straw purchases, talking about high, velo high, um, talking about, you know, high capacity am ammunition, talking about AR-15s, uh, those kinds of, those kinds of reasonable places where we can have, I mean, we can have a good debate about, uh, do we need AR-15s? That's a good thing to debate, but we never do anything. And well, we never we do anything because any time we get close, the NRA and other really radical, minor, need, very I mean, small minority people Do we need cars that go say, over stop. 80 miles per hour? Do we need cell phones? I would love, thank I mean, we you, could, we I could would do everything love with, if with we could if we could treat cars and guns the same way, that would be I fantastic. I would love it because I then would, we would all have insurance. I, I would never... I would never mention the Second Amendment again if we, because also when I get a car, if I sell you my car, um, you don't want my car. But if I sold the constitutionality of this issue, yeah, let's, if no, I sold let's it get to back to someone it. who, let's, there you're absolutely right, Katie. Okay, David, would track. Can we get back hold on to a that? second, David. You've, yeah. been, you've been talking for quite some time, sure. and I've, I've allowed you your space and your points. But let's talk Thank a little you. bit about, you're welcome, dear. Let's talk a little bit about a jurist, one who is supposed to hold the Constitution right. sacred. You cannot cherry pick for right. political benefit, certain parts of the Constitution that you now see as outdated. Yeah, Kennedy, Isn't I would just say, no, David, if, hold on, I'm going to let, let Katie respond. Katie respond. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm going to interrupt you. I'll let you respond to me once I get my point out. Uh, if you take away the Second Amendment and repeal the Second Amendment as the justice who is supposed to be defending the Constitution instead of ripping it up uh, claims, then you can start talking about taking away other amendments as well as a result of that, as consequences of that. For example, the Fourth Amendment, unlawful search and seizure, that would be required if we repealed the Second Amendment. The Fifth Amendment, which, which uh, would be the government coming into people's homes and confiscating private property without compensation. That is also something that would have to be taken out of the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, in order for them to, to get their Second Amendment repeal pipe dream. So if you want to repeal one of them, you're going to have to deal with the consequences of dealing with a whole bunch of uh, other uh amendments and rights being taken away. And on the issue of talking about, does anybody, quote, need an AR-15? It's called a Bill of Rights. It's not called a Bill of Needs. That's a good point, sure. Katie. And, and, and you know, you I want you to respond, David, specifically to the idea that there are people out there who want to repeal the Second Amendment. And as I said in my opening monologue, the reason this country is so powerful and people feel safe is they have a right to defend themselves. And if you look at regimes like North Korea, people there don't have mobility, they don't have access to basic freedoms, they also cannot defend themselves. Because people in those countries, the people with the guns, are the people in power. You know, all around the world, there are countries that are more and less free. Very few of them have firearms in and, and the way that we do in the United States. I think that's a mistaken argument. You're right. Um, they they have many more about, illegal firearms in well, places like and France. crime is higher. Violent crime is higher but in Great Britain. But we're not Britain. talking about Great Britain uh, or... Okay, anyway. you guys want I, that. I think we have you're to the ones stop. who want UK-style, Australian-style confiscation and gun control. So if you're going to compare us to that, let's like talk us. about the consequences. Which is violent crime is higher in those countries than it is here in the United States. I would like us to go back to this idea that the Bill, Amendments, Bill of Rights can't be changed. We, in the Constitution, built a system to change the Bill of Rights. That was the whole then point of how it was structured. Now, that, that doesn't mean that I'm saying it's possible right now, but here's the thing. Political cultures change. So if you don't want the political culture to change to make that possible, come with me. Join me in working on common sense, common ground solutions. We okay. can actually do this. We can make America a safer place.
I just want to uh, point out that the people who've been working on, quote, common sense solutions to gun violence, as they would call it in this country, are organizations like the NRA, the National Shooting Sports Foundation, who have actually worked with Congress and presidents in the past to make sure that mentally uh, unstable individuals, domestic abusers, are the ones who cannot legally purchase firearms. It was the Obama administration, by the way, who didn't prosecute gun crimes at a level that they were prosecuted before and, and they're and, being prosecuted And, and David, now. I, I just I want to make one last point here because it's really not just about the guns, as we saw in Austin right. with the indiscriminate bombing. It is about human nature. It is about a disconnect from humanity. It is about anger and rage and the symptoms of those that are misidentified, particularly with adolescent males who are thrown on psychiatric drugs that rattle their brains from young ages. And we you see... You have got to stop discriminated see, against people with psychiatric disabilities. I am not... No, you, I am I'm very... No, no, David, you don't you dare. The, the, Listen the, to what the, I'm the, saying, the, and don't you dare, because you know, yeah. and I've made it very clear, I'm talking about violent impulses. I'm not talking about panic disorder. I'm talking right. about young people who are put on antipsychotic medication, who get off of it and commit atrocities like this. I'm talking about people Every who are so shut up for a second. I'm talking about people who are so desperately lonely and disconnected from their family and societies. They feel the only recourse they have is to take their own lives. And that is older men in this country. I'm talking about women who are the victims of domestic abuse, who are relegated to the sidelines by law enforcement. That's who I'm talking about and don't you dare come on my show and put talking points in my mouth go ahead mr man you have the last word every country in the world has all of the things that you've talked about in terms of people with all kinds of mental health needs um, i am so in my in my broader work that's the exactly what i focus on only our country has this rate of gun violence and i still think we can do better we can do better, and there are many ways we can do better, Government especially do better. when we just demonize objects. We're doing a great disservice to the victims of violence in all its forms. David and Katie, thank you both so much. Thanks, Kennedy. Thanks for having me on. Well, the gun control debate isn't showing any signs of cooling down, as you saw at the top of the show. Hopefully you caught that fiery debate. As you know, millions of activists marched over the weekend to call for, you guessed it, more gun control. One group of students in Wisconsin is still on a four-day mission to raise awareness. They're walking 50 miles to House Speaker Paul Ryan's hometown to demand action. Some people have been raising eyebrows at who exactly is backing their movement. Celebrities like George and Amal Clooney, Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, and more. They have all helped bankroll these marches. One rapper, Vic Mensa, he also took to the stage. Problem is, he was convicted in California last year for carrying a loaded gun. It wasn't registered to him in that state at least. So do the celebrity backers taint the true meaning of the march. The party panel is back. Robbie Suave, Nan Hayworth, and Joe DeVito. Uh, so, Robbie, you have been covering some of these marches. You have gone out and you have talked to some of these students with very passionate voices. What have you learned? Uh, I was... Um interested to see that they are really afraid of dying in school like they say that to an unbelievable degree like it could be me I saw kids holding signs that said I could be next I will be next and when you talk to them they clearly thought they were going to be gunned down in school and that was and that's important to understand because that's the their sort of motivation for going out and doing this now of course you know mainstream media this isn't just a crazy libertarian idea but actually mass shootings in schools are rare and they're, they have more to fear from dying in a car crash on the way to school or any number of other things. They have so more to fear from obesity and, right. and being sedentary. Right. And, and I'm not saying that to be crass at right. all. But, you know, every death is tragic. Yes. Uh, when you lump all of them together, it's incredibly sensationalistic, sensationalistic and, and very sad. But if you look at gun deaths from 1993 yeah, to summited. 2015, it, it was 7.3 per 1,000 people, and now it's 1.1. Even as, as we've had more guns and we've had easier access to guns over that 
course of time. So you have to, and I think it's important to confront their, their wrong and mistaken belief that they're in serious, serious danger when they're in school because we make bad policy when we're afraid. You can go to the drug war, you can go to the war on terror, you can go to anything. We know we make bad policy when we're badly informed. So I think it's important to, to engage these, to, to yeah. respect them. Yes, because you know, it, it's, to, it's one thing to, to march, it's one yes. thing to protest, and I've been talking to my girls about this at home. Sure. And it's critical in protecting democracy that you have to be able to stand up and protest against your Absolutely. government when you think they're doing something wrong. Right. The problem is when you give in to emotional whims, you do, as Robbie said, make bad laws. And there's much more of an agenda here. And and the reasoning goes out the window. And what's happened, what's so troubling, is that these very motivated, very passionate, articulate, in so many instances, young people, uh, are being co-opted by the left and their intersectionality, you know, their intersectional agenda. So they are ignoring, willfully ignoring the evidence that we know is there that the shooter in Parkland should never have had access, by the mm -hmm. law, should never have had access to a weapon, yeah. ever. It was a failure of law enforcement. And, it and it's, it's very disingenuous agencies. to say that there are people who want more mass killings. Well, there's no side that's arguing that. There's no side that's in favor of this. And, and the problem, the good news is these kinds of shootings are extremely rare. The problem is it's hard to make something that's already rare more rare. It's not like you can go in and, and say, well, we're going to pass these new laws, when you, as Nan mentioned. This, this kid was waving more red flags than you see at a May Day parade, and they didn't do anything. So there already was the appeal to the authorities, and they didn't do anything from the, the calls to the police to the police hiding behind their cars, that shameful response to theirs. Yeah, the fact that he had a gun is uh, as sad and as yeah. horrific as the fact that law enforcement didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, nationally and local law enforcement, when they were notified so many times, I can't believe that sheriff still has a job. Yeah. Uh, right. Thank you all for being here. So great to see you. Thank Joe, you. Thank you. Welcome back. And Robbie. Thank you. Suave.